Hello, I'm going to continue with the OS dev here. Probably do some more of the read, write, seek, or close system calls. Maybe some other file system things. I don't really know. We'll see how far we get maybe in about uh, an hour, two hours. We'll see. But before I get into that, though, I do, of course, have changes since last time. So uh, props to YouTube viewer uh, Haroon Bazachi. However you say that, that's probably wrong. But I had some issues with a, a string comparison there and the... Last video I did where I did a bunch of debugging, there's probably a few other areas I misplaced as well, but that's okay. But we'll just go through all of these here. They're all in the file system, of course. All the great changes that are going on. I think that said it was at 68, which is here, yes. So fixing parenthesis for the string compare. This is what I had before. So if we don't find the directory entry that we're looking for, wherever we're looking for an inode. So given a string for a file name within a directory, we want to return the inode for that file within that directory. So where I'm looking through all the blocks in that directory on the disk, I want to see if the the name for that file is in there or if the inode's ID with that name is, is found or not. So if we don't find it and we're continuing to look through the file blocks, I was also comparing if we found the name. So searching if the name exists here, and if the name existed and the ID was zero, then the file didn't exist. It was deleted or something from the directory. But if the file does exist and the name matches, we want to get that file. But if we're searching for the name here, we're comparing against the name, against what we found in the directory for the files that the directory has. So I'm, I'm comparing the name in the directory, given the name that we're looking for, for the length of the file name, which that might need to be changed to the length of a or the size of a directory entry name, because I don't think the file name is bounded to, I think, 60, which is what the name in the directory entry is. Might have to do that. But uh, up here, I had the string length not equal to zero as the last condition in string compare. That would be the length we're looking for. Since that's a Boolean in C, that's going to evaluate to a zero or a one integer value. And you probably want to look more than zero or one characters for a name, so it'd be better to actually do the string compare correctly for the length value within the, uh, the string comparison function here. So thank you Harun for that, or Harun, however you, you want to say that. So elsewhere, what other changes did we have? We had a write updated block to disk, convert blocks to sectors, don't write it block, write it the sector value. Okay, this was another area I was just using the block value. This takes the starting sector on the disk that we need to write this many sectors with for this read write function. So I need to get the sector value, not the block value. So to convert blocks to sectors, again, I just multiply by the sectors per block, which should be eight, because sectors I'm working with right now are regular LBA values, logical block address values of 512 bytes, and a full disk block is the same as a page right now in this OS, which is 4096. So 4K divided by 512 is eight. That should be this value, but just using the right value there would be good. So another change, set new bit data if not in use, yes. So I had checking if a bit was in use because we want to see if a block on the disk is available to add to our directory if it's already full, I think. So we're adding a file to a directory. This isn't a create file function up here. If we add a file to a directory and it needs more data on disk, we need to allocate another disk block. So. I'm checking if the next block on disk where the where the directory is at, if the next one right after its current space is available, and I want to use that. So that's what this is checking, I believe. Yeah, the last use block plus one. So right after it on the disk, if that's available to use, we want to use that. So checking if it's available, I'm anding with basically the bit that we want to check. But that would mean if this is true, it would be one. <laughs> And the bit would be in use, and we don't want to use a bit that's already in use. It's not free. So I want to reverse that condition here with a not to check if that bit is not in use. Then we do want to go ahead and use it. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. Set new bit data if not in use. Yep. Yeah. So that's all that's doing. Uh, the next thing I added was some more things here. Okay. What did I add here? Wrote data false. I don't quite remember exactly what I did. So sorry about that. Okay, I'm ending the loop early here because of why. So I added a Boolean. If we're updating the data for the parent inode, we need to add the directory entry 
in the list somewhere or at the end. So a directory like, Ella, you know, we have these, we have these files here, right? These are in the, these are in our directory. They're in this order, what have you. So I'm checking for an empty spot within the directory. Say there's a gap here that a file was previously deleted at. So we want to add to that spot, or if it's all full, we want to add to the end of the directory list. The file would go down here, in which case it would be at the end of its data blocks and stuff. So I'm checking where to write the new file at, the new directory entry for the file. So I'm saying we start off by not writing the file. We search for a spot. If we find a spot, found an empty spot, we go through and write it to that spot. And then I'm saying we did write data and we're going to leave these loops. Okay, so that ends loops early. Okay, so it's an early into the loop so we don't have to re um, keep trying. I don't know what I'm typing here. <laughs> we don't have to keep trying to go through and search other spots because we already found one here. So that's what that's doing. That's just escaping these nested loops here through all the blocks in the in the file, all the disk blocks for this directory. And searching through each one of those blocks, searching through all the directory entries in each one of those blocks. I'm just ending early so we don't keep looking through and maybe have a bug later or just prevent some extra processing. So I added a done label. Yes, you can use loops. You can use, well, yeah, of course you can use loops. <laughs> you can use go to's and it's okay in some situations. A lot of the times people, well, it's more for error handling, I think, but you can use, you know, a set long jump sort of thing as well. I don't have those, or I don't want to use those because I haven't used them enough to be confident in them. So I'm doing a go-to. That's what I'm doing here. If we found the data and we wrote it, then we can go on. But if we search through all the blocks, and these are just the direct extents for our data, I'm not searching through the indirect extents. So if we search through all four direct extents for the directory and we didn't find it, or we didn't find a spot, then we have to look through the indirect ones, and that's what I'll do eventually. <laughs> Still putting that off. This is what this is saying. If we did write the data, we found a spot, we go on. If we didn't write the data yet, we have to look at the other ones. And this will probably be refactored later, of course, or abstracted somehow. I was thinking a little kind of maybe uh, having a sort of handler that we can pass around, or sort of, let's say, like a function pointer that we can pass to a given disk block or something later and we can do something to all the directory entries in that block. I don't know. I was trying to think how I could abstract out reading through a disk for a file um, and maybe generalize it in terms of uh, like one function would take a directory entry and it would print data for that inode, like for the print directory function for an ls command, say. And another one could look through and just return a boolean saying if the spot's free or something like this does. You know, I was trying to think how to abstract that. I think I could do something like like a map function in functional programming where you would give it some value and you give it a function to run against that thing and it would return something according to that function. I don't know. I'm still thinking through. So I'm not going to go with that for now, but that's all those changes were. I think that's it. You know, I learned that, hey, you can actually put the line number in. I wasn't doing that before. That helps sometimes, but there we go. So what am I going to try to do today? I think I'm going to try to do the close syscall and then maybe seek, if not read, write, and uh, other things. So I had those next. So I kind of wrote some logic out for a good few things so I didn't have to think as much during these. So close syscall, I'll probably try to do that. If it's small, I'll try to increase that a little bit. So I'm assuming it'll be something like this. Although maybe they use size T or S size T or something or just int on here, but it, it can be negative on error. So I'll say it'll be an int32 close taking a file descriptor. So the file descriptor in my OS, and I think traditionally, is an offset into, an, into a file table for the process, which goes into a system file table. I don't have processes right now, so it, it'll just be the regular system open file table. So the offset into that, there will be an entry into this array, this open file table. That passed in FD will correspond to that entry. So if it's zero, we want to error. But if it exists and it's valid, that is the file that we want to close that was previously open. I'll decrement a reference count for that, which is, I think, in the underlying inode table for the file, not necessarily in the file table. But we'll decrement that, and we will clear 
the data for the open file table entry. So that element in the array will just like mem set it to zero. That seems fair enough. It'll make a hole in the table. But next time we open something, that file descriptor can now be used for a different file from that point. So if we used FD5 in the table and we close the file, we don't need FD5 anymore. The next thing that calls open, if it's the same program or what have you, can then reuse that FD number, which I think is maybe how that normally works, but that's how I'm thinking through it. And if every, well, decrement a reference counts that if we call something like delete later or RM for removing a file, we want to check that nothing has it open. The reference count goes along with open and close here, where that if we close everything that had it opened and the reference count is zero, if we delete a file later, we can actually delete it. <laughs> Otherwise, if we call delete and the reference count is not zero, we don't want to delete it. We might just keep it in memory or something. I'm not sure. That'll be handled by something else later. But this is what I'm thinking. Close isn't too involved. Probably some other stuff I might forget, but I'll just try to do this stuff for now. So if it's zero, clear the open inode table. This will not delete from the disk. This will just clear the array element for the inode table in memory for the file. So similar to clearing the file table entry, this will clear the inode table entry as well. So I'll try to do this stuff. Hopefully that doesn't take too long. We'll find out. I might redo folder structures and things later as well, but that's project stuff. So it's overall project hierarchy. I'm, I'm trying to think through better things later on, but that's uh, not what we're doing now. It's orthogonal. So, okay. This would be in the system calls. Yeah, which would be interrupts, syscalls, how I have it laid out. So I added a stub, I think, for close, if I call it the right thing. Close. Okay. So we'll try this. So what does close involve? It does involve an FD number. I probably could redo these things to be more like C functions as well, as well and not just be void function void <laughs> and have to do everything with, you know, passing in stuff in inline assembly and making it a little more bug prone because it's not in C. I don't know. Passing in a context or a, a trap frame, as processes do, that I've read up on a little bit. Probably want to transition to doing that later, but that's all right. So what will this take? This will take an FD value. Let's also open up some syscall numbers I have, right? Some syscall files to lay out the, the stub for close, as it were. So close I have there. These are open flags. Let's go up to the wrappers. Okay. Let's put that up a little bit so my head's not in the way. So let's have int 32t close. Let's take in a constant fd close and open file. We'll just say. And we'll have stuff like this. I'll just do this right now. A will override the result. We'll call int 80. This will not be for open though. This will be for close. And we won't need anything else, I don't think. Shouldn't need anything else there. And that will go along to here. And we can move. We need an FD number. <laughs> Never mind. We do need an FD number. A holds that. So inside of B, I will put the file descriptor. We'll put FD. Make sure I close those parens all right. Yep. Okay. That FD will be passed in EBX. Let's just put that here. We'll have int FD. Start out at negative one. Sure. B will overwrite that. C we don't have here. All right. And at the end, of course, we'll return some error code or something. We'll call it result. I guess it defaults to negative one. So yeah, we'll do that here as well. We don't really need to do that here, but we'll do that here as well. Maybe we do need to do that there. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have this be, it doesn't necessarily need to be a register. I'll make like general, I think is what G stands for. That should be okay. And then that will be an EAX so that when this returns, it will return to the syscall dispatcher down here which will have the value in EAX, which we add over so we don't affect it after the call to the system call. I'm just reminding myself of this because I forgot it a little bit. And then we'll do an IRET D, save EAX value. Okay. 
yeah, this is the initial stack pointer and that does that. We save the stack and we save EAX, okay. Yeah, that should be all right. All right, so what do we do with close? We want to search for, or I'll just git. We'll do git open file table entry corresponding to given FD. Yeah, I'll just say given file descriptor FD. Yeah, okay. And then we want to, well, like I did in the, or like I showed in the, the text file, we want to error if that's zero, right? Error if not found or zero. All right, else decrement the reference count, clear the data, okay. Found FD in table, clear table entry. Decrement, ref count for file. We probably want to do that before clearing, otherwise we won't have access to the file. Okay, we'll do that. And we'll clear it from the inode table as well. If ref count equals zero, clear open inode table entry. Okay, and then we'll find out how to test this somehow, maybe within the kernel, or we'll just assume it works, <laughs> which is probably not great. But this isn't nearly, nearly as uh, involved or complicated as the open call, which really isn't that bad either. I'm also still debating whether I want to externalize all these in a global space here or still keep them in this. If I use these things in multiple areas, which I am, at least for the open file table and inode table, I probably should put these in like a global scope in this file. So probably should do that. These will technically all be global since they're in the global scope in the kernel. You know, right here, because I don't have a better implementation right now, so. It won't matter either way, and it's only used within the kernel, the syscall files here. So yeah, let me actually, if all else is good, I'm just gonna put these at the top of the file and hope they're okay. These are from kernel.c. Okay, well it compiles all right, so that's good. Okay, let's go back. Given file descriptor. I could test whether that actually does work still, so let me do that actually called it open test. It does make the file. So, okay, we're still good there. All right. That just tested the open syscall. So get this, so we'll have open file table, which is the name of that. I guess plus FD, because it is the size. It is the size of one entry. So pointer arithmetic says that this should work. So if we're given an FD of three, we want to go to position three in the table. It's just an offset into an array. That should be all right. But I can get a separate pointer to that. I'll just say it's an OFT pointer, you know, equals this, right? So on check if the data there is zero, I suppose, error if not found or zero. So the first thing available within a file table entry which I should have in the regular definition file for the file system. The regular, the regular thing in there, first off, I think is the ID. That's for the inode. This is the open file table, the address. So if we have a file, we have an address here, it should have valid flags. Flags should be, well, flags can be zero for read only, so can't check that. Ref count should be one. It should have an inode, it should have an offset, it should have an address. Ad offset may be zero, but it should have an address. Possibly later on, this might be zero. It should have an underlying inode though, if we're calling close. I'm just trying to think what we need to check against, which one of these values we need to check is, is blank or not, to see if it's a valid, a valid entry for an open file. So what do we do when we open one? Do I increment the ref count? I set the ref count to one. These are zero, although this is filled out later. We should have 
a value for the inode, we should have a reference count. So let's just check. Let's just check against those things. So let's say if if OFT inode equals zero. I could say or. Yeah, or or might work here. Or OFT ref count, because we don't want to close, we don't want to attempt to close a file that's already been closed. It might be a wrong file or something. Or the reference count is zero. Or, or is not open. We'll just say that, then we'll error out. And I'll say, We'll just do this. Well, I'll do like the errors I did up here, which I think is just moving negative one <laughs> as a constant in there. Well, I'm moving FD, but that's negative one, so that's what I'm returning. Yeah, so we would just move result like I'm normally doing. Since I initiated, initialized result to negative one, I can just do that. We'll just call this early, and I can do return. This is also a reason I want to change to probably doing int at least for the types for these so that I can just do return result in this case. That would be easier. Maybe things would be different if I port to like ARM or something way later on, but for x86, for the ABI, at least for C, the C ABI dictates that integers in the Sys5 ABI and Microsoft's uh, integers will be returned in EAX. So I should just be able to do return result if this function returned an int. You know, and that would be easier. Right now, I don't have that set up, so I have to do this, but I might think about that. But this should be okay. This equals this expression. That works, and we'll do that. So otherwise, we did find the FD, so decrement the ref count. So this the open file table is on memory. I don't have to write it back to disk. Unless we have journaling or something later, then I'll probably have to write stuff to disk. But right now, this is all in memory, assumed it's not <laughs> crashing, so... We'll just decrement the ref count, which is not in the table, it is in the inode. So the ref count in the inode is here. Oh, we do have a ref count. I'm only using that for dupe, though. Eh. I mean, I could make it one. That's true. We could decrement it. We could decrement both. Forgot I was maybe implementing file dupe later, but we'll do that. But the inode, the underlying inode has like a hard link, if you will, ref count. So that will be reduced as well. At least for it in memory. All right, so clear the file table entry. We'll mem set that. Um, and I don't remember <laughs> if it's length and then size or size and then length or what have you. It is the bytes we want to use and then the length, yeah. Didn't remember that. So the byte will do zero, the length will be the size of an open file table entry. So open file table T. So clear it so it can't be used again for that same one. And then this way, when we look through the open file table, if we open something else, up here we're looking through and finding an open spot while the address is not zero. So I assume it does have an address. <laughs> Probably should add on to that as well. And let's see if the reference count is not zero, or the reference count is zero. Yeah, this would be, and reference count not equal zero. The reason I'm doing that is because I set the reference count to zero. When I open the file here, so I will know if it's opened if that reference count is zero. So let me yeah, add that check in here as well. So if it finds one that is zero, all of these will not be true. It will go on and it will use that as the position, the index. And then it'll go on and set that. So yeah, that should be okay, hopefully. All right, if it's zero, clear the open inode table entry. So this would be if OFT inode reference count the inode is a pointer, right? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember anything. 
yeah, inode pointer. Okay, it would tell me if it's wrong, but still. So I need to deref twice from structs. If that is zero, or we could do if not ref count, but that's a little more obfuscated. Then we'll clear that. As file is no longer open or in use. Oh, two things I changed as well, which are, you know, orthogonal to all this again. <laughs> or what's another fancy way I can say that? Uh, not germane. <laughs> Since I'm trying to read more. Um, I don't have the stupid comments here anymore when I press O or when I press Enter. So I disabled that. And that comes from format options. But people probably don't care about this if they don't use Vim or NeoVim. But it's JCQL that used to have R and O on it. And that works now because I am setting this here. So I had to do, I couldn't just put this set format options minus equal R and O. It didn't work, but it does work if I set it to do an auto command for any file. <laughs> then I'm disabling adding comments. And I'm also making sure it's UTF-8 because I had issues with that on Windows and stuff earlier. But anyway, that's all I'm doing there. I added a color column as well. Just that 100. Because I saw some people use it as 80. I tend to go a little bit more and at my regular work and my day job um, for RPG, <laughs> for free format files, the limit traditionally in our, our database, our file system, our source is at 100. So that's why this is at 100. For me, it's a little easier. Sometimes lines will go beyond 80. So I just make sure if it's like way out here, I need to probably think about refactoring some stuff or make comments more succinct, what have you. But okay. So I want to clear as it's no longer open or in use. If it's zero, I'm going to memset that inode table entry. Probably do need to do that as well. This isn't going to work because we already cleared it. So I'll have to do this first. Because I probably do want to deref the count for the inode table as well. Yes, decrement ref count for file. And let's do this file table and inode table. That's the file table. We want to decrement it uh, in the inode table as well. I know I could do minus minus. That would probably be more succinct, wouldn't it? Okay, we can do that if inode ref count is zero, clear the open inode table entry which means I would have to look through there as well. Because the file wouldn't be open anymore. Yeah, okay. I can do that. So find file in inode table, clear entry in inode table. And I did call it open inode table, I believe. Yeah, right here. So let's do this. Let's have four open. Well, it would just be an inode. Four inode t pointer inode. I need like a length or a bound, which I have as max open. I have current open. Next available. This is annoying, isn't it? <laughs> just have i here or something. Let's do this. I will equal, I don't know, zero. That's fine. I less than current open inodes, which is what I called that. Yes. And I'll have inode plus plus, which will go in inode t value forward in memory, which is what the open inode table is made out of, inode t's. So that'll work. And I'll do i plus plus when I need to, probably when we find an open inode. Okay. Not great. Probably have bugs in this. That's okay. <laughs> so if our inode ID matches probably our current one. Well, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm doing too much work. <laughs> I don't remember, you know, my previous stuff that I did. So when I open the file, I'm setting this equal, the, the open file table entry inode. 
I set equal to temp inode. I believe temp inode is the position in the open file table, in the open inode table. But I don't remember, so let me check that. Otherwise I'd be duplicating a bunch of work for no reason. <laughs> yeah, so temp inode is the open inode table um, entry for an empty spot. If it already exists, it exists. Otherwise we add it to the table. Temp inode equals file inode, and in the file table, we're adding temp inode as the pointer. Okay, so I'm doing too much work. Sorry about that. Simpler than I thought. <laughs> we decrement for the ref count. If that's zero, this inode is the entry in the inode table, we can just deref that, or um, memset. We can clear that. Knew I was doing too much work. I felt it in the back of my brain a little bit. Must be size of inode t. All right, clear it. Let me just put a slash here. That'll work. I like that. So we're clearing. Didn't want to get rid of that. Sorry, <laughs> I thought that was redoing what I did here. So we're clearing that if it's zero, and we're clearing the open file table. Yep. Okay. So that should be all we need to do. I guess result would be if it's a success, it would be zero. I don't really know. Yeah, it's close to zero on success on error negative one. Okay. I'll just follow that that API here. We'll just do that. Result equals zero success and we'll return that. Okay, so that's close. Close shouldn't be too bad. We can try and do a test for that as well. I suppose. I know I just made them commands right now. That's fine. I do want to change these later, but that's okay. Right now we'll just have commands for file system stuff. Debugging but may keep. Yeah, that's that's okay. I want a different way of, you know, going through all these. So I do want to overhaul how the shell works, shell <laughs> works event eventually, maybe making it a separate program and stuff. And reading through a file, like um, maybe like a hash map or something that says, um, that just hashes the value that we send in and checks if that command is in, you know, our hash map, or do we have this command available? Is it is it there? And that would be good for like help text as well, could be more dynamic saying, you know, these are the available commands on the system according to your path or what have you. So I, I don't know. I'm trying to think through how to use our file system in the near future after stuff's a little tested and, and better. That might be something. Checking for string values is annoying when you're checking the length and everything and using string compare. It'd be better to just, I don't know. In some way, if you have a ton of stuff, it, it'd be better to have like a small hash thing. I think this would be a good use case for that, but... Instead of, you know, this if equals this, if equals this, if equals this, go on. I, you know, there's better ways to do this. But okay, let's say we're doing close here. Maybe I can do this open, replace with close, bam. I want to do that again. <laughs> I didn't do G. There we go. Okay. So let's say if close, new file. That's not an FD number, so I do need to open it first. So assuming we opened it, we should find the same thing if we call open twice, right? That should be how it works. Like if I call open and we found the file, we don't have to make the file. Yeah, that's only if it doesn't exist. Otherwise, we look for the file in the inode table. It already exists, we increment the reference count. Otherwise, we add it to the table. Look for the open file table. I probably don't want to do this if it's already open, so that is actually a bug as well. Put that there so I don't forget. I think this isn't all in a function, is it? We're allocating. 
Am I not just returning the FD value if we found the file? That would be obvious, right? Or no, I'm making a new one every time because you call open twice and it does return a new one. Never mind. Never mind. I think that's correct. Open allocates a new entry in the table every time. Unless you call like dupe or file dupe with a given FD number. So that's that's normal. Let me do um open, let's call this open test dot text just so we can differentiate some things here. And I should just make like, you know. Um, this should be just file. <laughs> Be a little bit better, probably. And we'll make this close. So let's say we'll do open first. We'll open file for O create. We won't write anything, but we'll just open it here. Hopefully, it doesn't error. We'll find out. But we'll try to close the file as well. So we need an FD number. So FD will be open with close FD. So not close FD. That's funny because maybe idiomatic use is because it returns zero. It would be this, which is <laughs> just looks kind of terrible, but that's all right. If it's zero, it's success. We'll say closed file, you know, file. Uh, VA parentheses. Let's just replace that. Okay, else, error could not close file. Okay, does that make sense? I'm gonna make a file name. I'm gonna try to open it, assuming that works because we have open tested up here. <laughs> Hopefully it works. Uh, we'll get an FD to that file, we'll try to close it. If it does close successfully, it should return zero all the way at the end of that syscall. Otherwise it should return negative one and it'll say could not close. So we'll see how that works. Could test the FD here though. Let's do that first. That would be better if I tested that. Yeah. Let's say if FD is greater than two, or if it's not zero. Do I return negative one? I don't remember. I really should remember these things. And I should be able to uh, type correctly as well. So this call open. So I initialize FD to negative one. If there's an error. I move FD, so it should be negative one on error. Okay. Yeah. I'll just do this here. We could not create the file. This is a bad way to do like error messaging too, but that's fine. That's not terrible actually. I just want to do created file. Percent S. Probably don't need to double up on all these either. Yeah, this doesn't need. So we'll already have a new line from there. So not create file or created file, and then we'll say closed file. Okay. We'll try that. All right. So currently in our root directory, we have these files. So open test should make our open test.txt. We check again, we have an updated time and date. So if I do close test, it should make close test.txt in this file. Created file, closed file. There we go. Okay, that doesn't mean it works 100% correctly, but it did make it. And it closed it. That was a little easier than I was expecting, actually. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, okay, I'm I'm okay with that right now. So let's say we got that done. All right. So I could look at seek. I could start seek. I've been going about forty minutes now. I could call it, which I know would be a shorter video, but I do like these things being shorter. They're easier to manage, and seek might take more than twenty minutes. 
So this could just be, you know, an additional thing that I'll <laughs> one video per syscall or something. I don't know. Or I, I could go on to seek though. Um, so seek set current and end. I don't remember if I have those. I did just write in that file. They would be new. So I probably don't have those actually. Let's do sys and we'll go to numbers. We do have seek. We do have open flags. Let's make an enum for those. Type def enum. These all have the whence t <laughs> or whence values, I guess would be what these are. Is they're called that? Let's do whence values, sure. A little awkward, but that's all right. So we have seek set. We have C. I want to make sure they're um, exclusive as well. So I'll probably do zero. Yeah, zero, one, and two will be fine for that. You can't or them and make another one is what I want to prevent, like for these. Let me uh, copy that as well. Read only. Okay. So what do we need for seek? We need set, current, and end. Set, current, and end. So what do these mean in terms of seek? Now in Linux, it's called lseek or longseek because of historical reasons. I'm just calling mine seek, not l or any other thing for that. But seek set, the value sim, like if you do seek um, a file, what is it, fd? I don't even remember. fd, you know, some number here, one, two, three, and some some whence value, which is what these are. Right, so seek set would be in this whence value here. And set will change the file offset to this value. So inside of, again in the file system, in our open file table entry, that's what is going to hold the values for the file in memory. That's how we're going to affect it through read and write and seek. And seek is going to specifically affect this offset. So that is where within the file within memory we're pointing to. So if a file is 5,000 kilobytes and we're pointing to position in the file at 1240, this offset will be at 1240. And we'll manipulate that with seek. So if we say seek set, that's going to set the offset value to whatever this offset we passed in. So if our file is 5,000 kilobytes and we say go to position one, two, three, that will change this offset to one, two, three. And that offset is offset from a base address in memory that I'm setting here within this table entry. So this might be a virtual address of like 10,000, but offset from that virtual address will be what this offset value points to. So one, two, three, if the file is at 10,000 in memory, it would point to 10,123 effectively. <laughs> Although seek also has a weird property that you should be able to seek beyond the end of a file. I don't think you can seek before the start of a file, but beyond the end of a file is okay. And that means that the next, the next read would return zero, but the next write would, I think, zero pad out until that new position, if possible, and there's enough space in the file system. So that's, that's more of a write syscall um, discrepancy that we can deal with later, but that's just a weird property of seek. We could also prevent that, and that would be easier, but maybe I'll, I'll allow it, we'll see. That might come up more in practice that we want to, uh, that we want to have that available. So seek set would set the offset value uh, in the file table entry to what's, what was passed in. Seek current basically adds to the offset value whatever you pass in, because that'll be according to where it currently is pointing to in the file. I should also put like documentation here probably. Seek whence values. So seek set uh, sets the current file offset to passed in offset. Let's do used in seek as eg. Seek uh, file descriptor offset. Wince. So it sets it, e.g. if open file table entry offset equals, I don't know, 10,000, <laughs> seek set and passed in offset equals 200, seek set will set file table entry offset equal to 200. That's probably 
a little more confusing than I'm meaning it to be, but that's what it does. See current adds the current offset value to the file table offset. You can pass in negative values for this and the file will the file position will move backwards potentially. We do probably want to prevent it from going before the beginning of the file, but you can do that. So that's what I'll do and can be negative which will move the file position backwards. Put an example. I could put EX instead of EG. I don't know, it, it doesn't really matter. I worry about minutia that isn't worth worrying about. <laughs> so let's say seek FD, let's say 100 seek current, we'll add well, we'll set file table offset plus equal 100. Let's also do this, seek FD negative 256, seek current, we'll set file table offset minus equal 256, effectively. I'll put or until start of file, whichever one's shorter. I'll probably have that behavior. We'll go backwards to the start, but we won't go before the start because that would probably go into other memory we don't want to mess with. It's not guaranteed to be available for this file. It may cause a seg fault normally on your OS, I don't know. But we could allow it to seek past the end of the file and the next write would zero pad out until then. I guess I'll, I'll probably try to copy that behavior from, from POSIX or whatever. But the last one is seek end. So seek end, um, I don't remember. I think it adds from the end of the file but I do have those three. Well, I wrote it here, didn't I? Set, set the file table entry offset to the file size plus the offset. Okay, so it's an easier way of, of writing to the end of the file. Sets the current, uh, let's just do file, current file offset value to the end of the file. I'll say, current file size and bytes and then adds the uh, given offset value to it. So eg seek fd 100 seek end will set file table offset equal to file size and bytes. Let's say file size and bytes plus 100. So hopefully that makes sense, right? It's a little verbose, but I'd rather have more documentation than less. So that's kind of what Seek's doing. Hopefully that demystifies it a little bit. That's what we would be writing with some extra error handling, of course. So I'm gonna do that on uh, the next one because this part is now closer to an hour and I'm a lazy person. I'll probably just record it right here, but it's a lot easier for me to edit down videos if they're like less than, you know, an hour and a half to an hour. So, and it gives me a bite-sized chunk to, to think over, fix mistakes in between recordings and other stuff. So anyway, hope this was okay. Hope you enjoyed. I know we only did close, but I did a couple other things. So I'll do seek and then if that gets done within an hour, it should, I'll move on to uh, read and write and we can test these things, right? So I'll do that next. Uh, thanks for watching, appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. So cheers.